you very much. So I'm going to talk about homotopy type theory. So in particular, I'm really interested in the homotopy theory side of things. And so I will, as I will explain, the idea is to do homotopy theory, but in a quite different way than usually, in that we will work invariantly. Everything we do will be invariant up to homotopy. So first, uh, a rough definition of what is homotopy theory. So uh, homotopy theory is the study of homotopy types. And what do we mean by homotopy type? So usually the definition we take is a topological space, but up to something like weak homotopy equivalence. So it's not, we're not interested in topological spaces up to homeomorphisms, but up to uh, homotopy equivalence or weak homotopy equivalence. So we can also talk about CW complexes up to weak homotopy, up to homotopy equivalences, also simplicial sets up to homotopy equivalences. And so my point is that it's not the same thing as topology, in that we are really uh, interested only in the homotopy theoretical properties of uh, spaces. And we are not interested in the problems th with like uh, pathological spaces in topology. That's really not the thing we're interested in in homotopy theory. And topology is just kind of a way to access the underlying homotopical structures of the object we're interested in. And so th the, the point of uh, what I'm doing will be to do homotopy th theory, but without needing to go through spaces, to through topological spaces, to do it kind of directly. So now let me talk about something different, which is about foundations of mathematics. So first, an observation is that the primitive objects of mathematics in general <coughs> behave somehow like homotopy types. So if you take two natural numbers, well, they are either equal or different. Nothing special here. But now if you take two sets, well, the notion of equality between sets is a bit strange. You should really talk about bijections between sets. That's what matters. And now, two sets can be in bijections in many different ways. There is not just one way, like natural numbers. And we can go one level higher. If you take two categories, then they can be equivalent in many different ways, just like sets. But those equivalences can be themselves equivalent or naturally isomorphic in, uh, again, many different ways. And that's similar to homotopy theory, where you have points, and you can have paths between those points. And you can have several different paths, and you can have several different homotopies between those paths, and so on. And so the Univalent Foundations program, it's something which has uh, been started a few years ago by Vladimir Voevodsky. And the idea is to base the foundations of mathematics on this ID. So it's uh, implemented in some variant of Martin Love type theory, which is a system very well known to computer scientists and to constructive mathematicians. And one of the uh, big advantages is that it enables us to formally check the correctness of proofs. So it has a computer implementation in which you can just put in proofs in some language, and it will check that the proof is correct. And it's all based on this ID. And well, it's a foundation of mathematics, so it can be used to formalize all of mathematics. Uh, by default, it's based on constructive logic, but it's also compatible with classical logic, if you want. OK. So as I said, uh, univalent foundations can be used to formalize all of mathematics. And Homotopy, homotopy theory is a part of mathematics. So we could use univalent foundation to formalize homotopy theory. In that we could just define the notion of topological spaces using the notion of set and propositions that you have in univalent foundations, prove all the usual theorems about homotopy theory, and basically everything would work as you expect. But what I'm doing is something quite different. So what I'm doing is usually called synthetic homotopy theory or invariant homotopy theory. And the idea is to really use this uh, fundamental connection of univalent foundations with homotopy theory to reason directly about homotopy types. And so, so unlike this first, so, so this idea that you can formalize homotopy theory in UF like that, you can do that to any uh, area of mathematics. But this one is really tied to homotopy theory because of this 
uh, fundamental connection between univalent foundation and uh, homotopy theory. So in particular, I'm not using at all the notion of topological space or, or simplicial set at all. The homotopy types are my primitive objects of my theory. And so the idea is that all concepts that we use in all definition or construction or proofs are always uh, homotopy invariant. So you can think of it as just doing regular homotopy theory, but in a way that you are never allowed to use anything which is not homotopy invariant. Mm -hmm. And so this is very uh, constraining because a lot of things that homotopy theorists do is to do something on topological spaces and then prove that it's homotopy invariant. But here you cannot do that. You have to do it in a way which is homotopy invariant from start to finish. So for instance, a few concepts which are not homotopy invariant and so we, which we cannot do as easily. So you cannot talk about sus subspaces. If you want to take the complement of a point or of, of a knot <coughs> or something like that, well, you can't do that because it really relies on the topological structure of what you have. If you have a map F from E to B between two spaces, you cannot really talk about whether it's a vibration of or not because it's not stable by homotopy. For instance, the universal cover of S1, it's a map from R to S1, and it's homotopic to a constant map, which is not a vibration anymore. Cautions are also very uh, problematic. Um, for instance, projective spaces, the idea is that you do the quotient of Sn by the antipodal map. But when n is odd, the antipodal map is homotopic to the identity function. And everything is supposed to be invariant and in homotopy, so there is something wrong here. Also, the matrix group like SON or Grassmannian, which are very important in homotopy theory, while well, the definition is really a point set topology definition. You define a set of things and you put a topology on it. And, and so here, we would like to have that, but we have to give a different definition. And so the, the, all of that basically boils, boils down to the <coughs> fact that equality works a bit differently. That the notion for two points to be equal is not stable under homotopy. You need to replace it by the notion of those two points being related by a path. And when, then when you're related by a path, you can have several different paths, which can have several uh, different homotopies between them and so on. Okay, so there are a lot of things we cannot do, but we still can do something. So what can we do? We can talk about function spaces. So w when I say space, I mean like ho this abstract notion of homotopy type. I don't mean topological space. So we can talk about uh, function spaces. We can talk about path spaces, even a type and two points in it. We can talk about the type of all paths from one to the other. That's homotopy invariant. We can do a bunch of homotopy limits and homotopy colimits. And that's very useful to give, up so, to give us some basic types to work with. For instance, we can construct various cell complexes like Sn or Rpn, and then prove things about them. There is something called the truncations, which corresponds to killing all homotopy above some level. So this, this is used, for instance, to define the, the homotopy groups or to define the eilenberg maclean spaces. And finally, there is something called the universes. So uh, the universe <coughs> is intuitively the space of all spaces, and which, uh, which is, as we will see, it's very useful in this theory to talk about the space of all spaces. OK, so now let's talk a bit more about vibrations. So earlier, I said that vibrations are problematic because it's not stable and homotopy. But actually, it's because when you see a vibration as a map from the total space to the base space, it's not really the, the right way to see vibration. A vibration, you should see it as a family of spaces, which is parameterized by another space. And so usually in uh, ordinary topology, uh, it's not easy to encode that directly. So we use this map from the total space to the base space. To, to, but, but this is really the intuition that we have. And so here it turns out it's very easy to talk about this definition directly because we have the universe, which is the space of all spaces. 
And so a vibration of our type B, just a map from B to the universe. So, uh, and so then if you have any x in B, you can apply this function P to x and you get P of x, which is a type, which corresponds to the fiber over x. And now this notion of vibration is well behaved up to homotopy. And so in particular, in the case when B is defined as some kind of cell complex, we need to define a map from a cell complex to the universe. And for that, we need to give the images of all the cells. In particular, we need to understand what's a path in the universe. And so this is where uh, Voivodsky's univalence axiom comes in. What the univalence axiom says is basically that a path in the universe is the same thing as a homotopy equivalence between its endpoint. And so that's what we will use to construct uh, vibrations. So let's give uh, an example for the universal cover of the circle. So the circle, we generate it as some kind of cell complex with one point and one pass. So we have one point B in S1 and one pass P from B to B. That's a correct, that's a like valid definition in this setting. And now we want to define a vibration over it. So a vibration, it's a map P from S1 to the universe. And because the circle is defined like that as a cell complex, we need to give the image of the base point and the image of the loop. So the image of the base point is just a type in the universe, so we take the integers, and the image of the loop, by the univalence axiom, we need to give an equivalence of the integers with themselves, and we take mm -hmm. the equivalent which adds one. So really, to define the vibration over S1, you give the fiber over the base point, and then the monodromy. And then when you have that, you can, for instance, prove that the, compute the total space and prove that the total space of that is contractible. And you can use that to deduce that the loop space of uh, the circle is the integers. So we can do uh, many other things. So here, here are a few examples. So first, pi 4 of S3 is Z mod 2. So that's what I did uh, two years ago in my PhD thesis. So uh, for now, for the homotopy group of, of spheres, we are not yet to the point that <laughs> Irina showed uh, earlier. Uh, that's the kind of the best one we have so far. But we have to redo everything like in a different way. So it's still some work. So in particular, this one requires the universal cover of S1 that I just showed earlier. Also, we need to define the hop vibration. So also similarly, except that it's a bit more complicated because it's com more complicated spaces. We need the James construction. We need the blackers mathe theorem, which is a generalization of the Freudenthal suspension theorem, which is what Irina said about the diagonals converging. So we have that. We need cohomology, the Hopf invariant, and some version of the Tom isomorphism. And putting all that together, we could get pi 4 of S3 is C mod 2. There are other spaces, the other results of uh, homotopy theory, like covering spaces, the Seifert Van Kampen theorem, and the Kratenionic Hopf vibration. So all of that we can do in this. Setting. And so I should mention also that Favonia, who appears several times here, is uh, also at the IS this year. So you can also talk to him about that. And so to finish, I will show uh, another example of something uh, I'm working on currently. It's the Steenrod squares. So the Steenrod squares, there are operations on uh, Z mod 2 cohomology. So SQI goes from HN to HN plus I. And most of the usual definitions, uh, I couldn't manage to reproduce them directly in this setting because it's usually using some simplicial thing or something like that, and <coughs> it didn't seem to work. But there is another way to do it, which is kind of similar. But So first we start by defining U2 to be the type of all types with exactly two elements. So we can define in the setting what it means for a type of our space to have exactly two elements. So it might seem a bit strange because intuitively there is only one, like the two element space. But 
this two element space is uh, equivalent to itself in two different ways. You have the identity equivalent, and you have the equivalent which swaps the two elements. And those two equivalents, equivalences are somehow included in this, in this structure of type of all types with two elements. Then we prove that the cup product is homotopy commutative in the following sense. Given any x in u2, so, gi so given any x which is a type with exactly two elements, we define a map from hn to the power x to h2n. So what that means is that given any type with two elements and any two cohomology classes indexed by x, then you can multiply them and it ends up in h2n. So really what that means is that you can multiply two cohomology classes without knowing which one is the first one and which one is the second one. And so intuitively, it really means that it's commutative. Because you, you, commutative is that you don't need to decide which one is the first argument, which one is the second. And this says that in a very deep sense. And then we can actually prove that this type u2 is equivalent to RP infinity, or to KZ2, uh, KZ2 1. And we can compute the cohomology of that, and then use the fact that the cup product is homotopy commutative to construct the Steenroth squares and to prove the various properties about them. OK, so uh, what I would like to do this year is to continue on this, uh, in this uh, invariant homotopy theory and try to do more things, for, for instance, the defining Grassmannians and proving bot periodicity and things like k-theory and spectral sequences. We still don't know how to do that, but it looks like it should not be too difficult to do, so that's one thing I would like to try to do. I would also like to understand better the constructivity properties of homotopy type theory. So I didn't mention it, mention it here, but uh, there are a lot of problems related to the fact that type theory is supposed to be constructive. And whenever you, constru you prove that something exists, it gives you an algorithm to, uh, to compute it. And, but it's not really well understood in the framework of homotopy type theory yet. And also, I would like to work on the Agdai library for homotopy type theory. So Agdai is a, a proof assistant a program to formalize mathematics in this setting. And I would like to work more on developing this library. And so don't hesitate to come talk to me if you want to know more about that, or, or especially also if you know some homotopy theory that you think could fit well into this framework, I would be very interested to know about it. So thank you very much. <laughs>